Sam Johnson has been a lifelong hero of mine. And one thing one can say about him was that he didn't soft soap his interlocutors. He always told people exactly what he thought and what he meant. I'm going to read a poem which exemplifies this, but first I thought I would read his extraordinary and memorable letter to Lord Chesterfield, which is one of the great pieces of English prose. And it's not a poem, of course, but it deserves to be listened to with the same attention that one would offer a poem. Johnson had been uh, adopted, if you like, by Lord Chesterfield, uh, who claimed to be his patron, but did absolutely nothing to help Johnson. And then when Johnson became famous, suddenly associated himself with Johnson's name, at which Johnson wrote uh, this letter. My Lord, I have been lately informed by the proprietor of the world that two papers in which my dictionary is recommended to the public were written by your lordship. To be so distinguished is an honour which, being very little accustomed to favours from the great, I know not well how to receive or in what terms to acknowledge. When, upon some slight encouragement, I first visited your lordship, I was overpowered, like the rest of mankind, by the enchantment of your address, and could not forbear to wish that I might boast myself le vainqueur du vainqueur de la terre, that I might obtain that regard for which I saw the world contending. But I found my attendance so little encouraged that neither pride nor modesty would suffer me to continue it. When I had once addressed your lordship in public, I had exhausted all the art of pleasing which a retired and uncourtly scholar can possess. I had done all that I could, and no man is well pleased to have his all neglected, be it ever so little. Seven years, my lord, have now passed, since I waited in your outward rooms, or was repulsed from your door during which time I have been pushing my work through difficulties of which it is useless to complain, and have brought it at last to the verge of publication without one act of assistance, one word of encouragement, or one smile of favour. Such treatment I did not expect, for I never had a patron before. The shepherd in Virgil grew at last acquainted with love, and found him a native of the rocks. Is not a patron, my lord, one who looks with unconcern on a man struggling for life in the water, and when he has reached ground encumbers him with help? The notice which you have been pleased to take of my labours, had it been early, had been kind, but it has been delayed till I am indifferent and cannot enjoy it, till I am solitary and cannot impart it, till I am known and do not want it. I hope it is no very cynical asperity not to confess obligations where no benefit has been received, or to be unwilling that the public should consider me as owing that to a patron which providence has enabled me to do for myself. Having carried my work thus far with so little obligation to any favourer of learning, I shall not be disappointed, though I should conclude it, if less be possible, with less, for I have been long wakened from that dream of hope in which I once boasted myself with so much exultation, my lord, your lordship's most humble, most obedient servant, Sam Johnson. And now the poem, which was addressed to uh, a young aristocrat on his 21st birthday. It's called A Short Song of Congratulation. Long expected one and twenty, lingering year at last is flown. Pomp and pleasure, pride and plenty, great Sir John, are all your own. Loosened from the miner's tether, free to mortgage or to sell, wild as wind and light as feather, bid the slaves of thrift farewell. Call the Bettys, Kates and Jennies, every name that laughs at care, lavish of your grandsire's guineas, show the spirit of an heir. All that prey on vice and folly joy to see their quarry fly, 
Here the gamester, light and jolly, there the lender, grave and sly. Wealth, Sir John, was made to wander, let it wander as it will. See the jockey, see the panda, bid them come and take their fill. When the bonny blade carouses, pockets full and spirits high, what are acres, what are houses, only dirt or wet or dry? If the guardian or the mother tell the woes of wilful waste, scorn their counsel, scorn their pother, you can hang or drown at last.